Hey, what's up everybody? How are you doing? This is Bayo Adio, the Nigerian nomad. I am a Nigerian American that travel full time and currently vlogs about Nigeria. Welcome, if you're new, um, that, those are the things I talk about, food, investment opportunities in Nigeria, and just culture and lifestyle and just vlogs of things that I'm up to. Um, and if you guys are, have been following me for a long time, thank you so much for your support. Welcome back. So if you guys have been following me, you know I am back in Nigeria. I'm actually in Banana Island right now at a studio, so you guys see that I'm in a bed. So a studio is like a self-containing room that has the, the kitchen, the, sh um, the closet, and the place all in the same area. I mainly came here for their fast fiber internet <laughs> because I had a lot of meetings to do, a lot of videos to upload, download, edit, so I just came here. But anyways, today's video is to share with you guys my experience of traveling through the Lagos airport. I know a lot of people have a high level of stress with that. So I wanted to share how you can travel through, like when you're coming into Lagos airports, how you can travel through the airports stress-free. And I know you guys are probably like, what? The stress is the main thing that people think about when coming to the airport. So I wanted to share the things that I do to make it as stress-free as possible with you guys. And hopefully you can get one or two tips that can help you maneuver the process. So let's start. So number one, in order to travel through the airport uh, safely, you have to have all of the requirements that you need. So like Nigeria requires you to go to, their, to the website, to the travel portal website. I'll post the link in the description. You need to get a QR code, which is like a permit to travel. You need to get a COVID PCR test 72 hours before boarding your flight. And with all of that, you need to have physical copies and proof, even copies of your COVID-19 test. Just in case there's any issues, you have a proof to back up. Like if your QR code is not working, something is not working, you can at least show them your COVID-19 test. So that is step number one. Um, and again, preparation, proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. That's like six Ps of something that I learned in business. <laughs> so now for you guys, I want to take you guys kind of like on a journey in my vlog of going through the airport. But that is number one, passport, PCR, COVID-19 test, all the requirements that you need is number one. So now let's talk about the actual traveling through the airport. So another thing that you need to have is actually patience. And what I mean by that is the mindset of traveling into Nigeria and through Lagos is to know that no matter what happens around you, you're going to stay calm and you're not going to stress about it that you're gonna overcome as long as you've done all your preparation. So already ahead of time, I'm coming in with a lot of patience. Like I'm not rushing anywhere. I'm taking my time to do all of these things. So mindset wise, just come with that. And uh, another tip before we start this vlog is I prefer to travel to Nigeria with just a carry on bag. So I don't check in. And again, that's I don't want to deal with baggage being lost. I don't want to deal with customs. I, I, it's also another extra stop that I can prevent. So I typically travel with carry-on bags. All right, so now if you guys have all of that prepared ahead of time, let's talk about the actual journey through the airport. For me, when I first landed in the airport, <laughs> this is like a complete Nigerian thing. First of all, one of the things that happened was like the plane. A lot of people were rushing to get in and I didn't quite know how, why. It's because all these people have so many bags. <laughs> so the airplane gets full pretty fast. So I think the first stressor is if you're flying in, if the plane is crowded, just know that Nigerians carry a lot of bags. So 
all the places might be filled up. But again, don't stress because the idea is to know what to expect and not stress about it and overcome it ahead of time. So if all of the places are filled, the airline people are going to grab your bag and they're just going to check it in for you um, at the tarmac. That way you can grab it on your way out. So again, no big deal. All right. But as soon as I got to Nigeria on this journey, there were people fighting behind me, arguing, a man and a woman. I don't know. Somebody pushed somebody. People, I don't even know when people are flying, why do they, as soon as the plane stops, why does everybody rush to get their bags? <laughs> Anyways, so I'll, here's a clip of everybody just arguing and fussing and fighting. And I'm just like, I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to wait till everybody gets through this flight. And then I'll grab my bag when everybody's ready. But anyway, you guys check out this, my first experience of landing. I mean, the first thing that I had to experience when landing in Lagos. Check it out. I'm just waiting for everybody to just leave before I get my bag. I never know what the rush actually is. It's like 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome to Nigeria. I want to take you guys on uh, my experience landing at the Lagos airport and the experience of going through the airport. Uh, it looks like it's an exciting start so far. <laughs> All right, guys, isn't that crazy? It's wild. They were cursing at each other. But anyways, I stayed put and I let everybody kind of go rush through their thing. And then I grabbed my bags. So that's I've already avoided lots of stress up to this point. One thing that you guys need to know for expectations is that Typically, when you're going through the Lagos airport, there is going to be roughly three to five stops. So for this, depending on if you, you go through customs and if you're going through baggage claim. So the first stop that you should expect to encounter is some sort of traffic control person. Um, sometimes they'll be there, sometimes they'll not be there. And I actually wrote down how long it took me so I can give you guys information on how long to expect that you're going to get through the airport. So when you tell somebody to pick you up, you can give them a rough time of when to pick you up. Also, you would not rush because you know that this is how long it would take you in general to do that. So the first stop took me about um, 10 minutes. So I think what they were doing is they were controlling traffic and then they get you to go through that. Again, there's lines all across this path. Um, the second stop that you need to be prepared for is the it's a COVID-19 check stop. So this is where they're checking for your barcode, your QR code, to make sure that you've paid. Um, if you haven't paid, don't worry about it. Just tell them that the website is not working, but you plan to pay when you get to the destination. Um, but they'll scan your QR code. They take your COVID-19 test with you because you never know if they're gonna ask it. So take that with you, they check it. Um, and that's the first station. All right, so I got through the COVID-19 test. The system, the internet didn't allow me to pay. So I just told them I'll pay when I get to the clinic to do my seven day test. And uh, they just tested the QR code. For some reason it wasn't scanning. So they wanted me to get a soft copy. So I did that and they were able to get me through. On to the next stop, which is passport. All right, so once you get through that, then now you have to go through the passport control system, um, control station. So just make sure you have your passports ready, whatever password you're using, your visa, all of that stuff. Expect there to be a long line. One thing that's weird about this station is sometimes you have to clear your passports from one, from another place, and then go and have somebody else check your passport again, which I always complain that it's redundant. But I finally asked the official, like, why are you guys checking the passport twice <laughs> in one place? And he said they're different entities. Like one is, I don't know, anti-terrorism entity and the other one is like the local immigration, whatever. But anyways, each of those took about, um, the first one took about like uh, 
20, 30 minutes. And then the second station took about like another like 10 minutes. So right now we're roughly like 40, 50 minutes into this journey. So then after that stop and you get all of that cleared, and by the way, people are going to ask for money at every station. Like uh, if, when they check your password, they'll say, hey, oh God, what did you bring me? Bring me something, whatever, whatever. At your discretion, you can tip them. But I actually stopped tipping at the airports. I'm a generous tipper, but I stopped doing it because I feel like I'm rewarding them for wasting my time. <laughs> and this is more of a... Um, this is more of a psychological thing for me. I feel like I should be tipping and paying someone for actually helping my journey. So I think one of the things that happens at the Nigerian airports is they've created all these artificial stops that is unnecessary. And each stop is an opportunity for you to interact and engage with somebody so they can ask you for money or trouble you. For me, I see that as a nuisance. I, I mainly want to tip to go faster. So I feel like if I'm tipping you, I'm rewarding you for wasting my time. <laughs> so that's why I don't do it anymore. Um, and again, their job is not any, they're not delivering any type of extra level of service for them to warrant that. Somebody's just checking your passport and for you to move on. I don't feel like that's like a service that requires tipping. Anyways, so yeah, so I don't tip anymore at the airports. Um, so that is the second station. Now, the third station is um, baggage claim. So I didn't have any luggages, so I didn't stop there. But typically, you might have to spend like another 30 minutes, 40 minutes there um, just to get all the baggages to come out. Sometimes they're actually out ahead of time and they're just spread it in the area. Then you have to go and look for your bags. There's going to be people to approach you that they want to help you look for your bags, help you carry your bags. Don't feel obligated. Um, to have them help you unless you need help then you can pay them a little bit of money for them to help you carry your bags to the destination but I typically like to decline things because I like to carry my own bags um, anywhere that I go just I just feel like I don't need it like I'm like I don't need a concierge service I'm not like a fancy person that I need all these people to carry my things for me and besides I don't have Naira so I feel like I don't even want to put myself in a situation where I have to tip them and I don't have the money to tip them. But anyway, so just know you can always respectively decline uh, multiple times if they ask and just say, no, you got it. Um, so yeah, so and then the fourth stop is going to be customs. I was able to buy just go because I didn't have baggage claim. But again, with customs, research what you're supposed to take on, what you're not supposed to bring in, whether it's like agricultural products. I don't know, whatever you're not supposed to bring in, research ahead of time. So that way, when you get to customs, there's no stress. You, they just, as long as you're following it, they, they really have nothing to hold on you. Um, they do have some sort of bad practice in Nigeria. Sometimes these people might just want to delay you and give you trouble and waste your time just so you can like tip them. But again, if you have nothing to hide, you're fine. When I go, I'm prepared to spend a lot of time there because I'm not in a rush to get out of the airport. So I'm just like, do what you gotta do. <laughs> and whenever you're ready, you let me go. I'm not, tip I'm not giving you anything. I'm following the laws. There's no rules or laws that says you can't bring this. So again, that's why you have to prepare ahead of time, figure out like, what are you allowed to bring, what you're not allowed to bring. So that way you're not having to deal with any official in a way that your time will be wasted or you have to pay a lot of money. So, oh, no, no check now. So I have no luggage, so I'm bypassing all the luggage folks. Woohoo! Freedom! I don't have much. What's the exchange rate, man? 12,000. Okay, 12,000. How much is the dollar? 5455? Thank you, ma'am. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I stopped by and I changed $30 for 12,000 Naira immediately at the kiosk within the airports, which is cool. I didn't want to have to do it outside. So I'm out. And then when you're leaving the airports, depending on if this is your first time coming to Nigeria, you actually don't go directly into like an area where people can pick you up. 
for you guys that are going to Nigeria, know that Nigeria is very different. When you get out, you actually go to your left and you go through this canopy walk. Um, it's like a little hallway that you end, then end up at the car park. So if anybody's coming to pick you up, most of them would be in the car park area, which is like a car parking station. So, but typically in other countries, you get out of the airport, there's people, cars picking you up in front. So, but throughout that alleyway, you're gonna come across a lot of taxi people wanting you to, asking you if you need a ride, um, people wanting to change money, just respectfully, respectfully decline, no issues. No, none of them are actually going to do anything to harm you. So don't feel like on edge or feel unsafe. They're all just hustlers wanting to make money, like people coming in, whether you want to change money or whether you don't change money. There's no reason to freak out. Just tell them, no, you already you already did it or, or you don't have any cash and just go through it. So anyway, so you're going to take that canopy park all the way and then you're going to go into the car park. But I did something unique this time. I wanted to see if I can catch an Uber or a boat directly from the airport. I have never came to Nigeria and not had a ride waiting for me. Whether it's like my uncle, a friend, somebody, there's usually a relative waiting for me or it's a driver that they sent to me. But what I want to promote is this sense of independence. So like my first few times of coming to Nigeria, I'm learning to be independent and not rely on people. Um, so I decided I'm going to try something new. I'm going to order an Uber as soon as I got to the airport. So I ordered an Uber literally when I got to the plane. If you guys are using your phone from the US, you actually can still have a phone service. It would just be a little bit more expensive. I think $10 a day travel pass, but it's worth the headache. Um, it's worth not having the headache to have to ask someone if you can borrow their phone and all of these things. So just um, have Uber call it and then the Uber person was there and then he parked at the car park. And then what Uber has which is cool now is that drivers can chat with you and call you within the app. So you necessarily, if you don't have a Nigerian data and you don't want to call an international number and sometimes the Uber don't want to call your number because it's international, they can actually now do a data call through the app, So which is cool. So. Um, I wanted to try it out and surprisingly the uber guy was there I called him and I went to the car park and um, It was very easy. He was just there and he paid and then we just left very nice guy He was so prepared. He had chargers. I mean he had everything. I was so impressed by him by the way I still hire him to take me to a lot of places <laughs> in Nigeria like if I need to go to open states I still call him up. He's just, a, his car is cool. He's such a responsible driver. So if you guys need someone to come pick you up, let me know, I'll hook you up. I'll send him to come get you from the airport. Um, and then, guys, that is how you get through the airport and that is what to expect. Now, I'm not promising that something would not come up, that you're not gonna come across somebody that's gonna stress you out or something. something is going to frustrate you. I think sometimes, Frustration is very common with the way things run here, but I just want you to have the mindset that you're going to overcome whatever comes up as long as you've done your due diligence ahead of time. Some Nigerians are going to tell you to bend the rules a little bit, like, ah, just don't do it. I would recommend that you don't because once you start doing that is when now you have to engage with people and try to like figure out a way to overcome it. So I'll say whatever the rule is, whatever the law is, don't be like Nigerians that are stubborn because <laughs> you're a brand new. You don't know how to maneuver the system yet. So just follow everything and honestly, I think you'll be all right. There's other issues that you might face, but I just wanted to present to you how to like travel through Lagos because that used to be my biggest stress. But now I travel in and out of Lagos. Like I already know what to expect. I just go smoothly. So hopefully this video helps you guys know what to expect. Just know that I just have two or three stations and then I'm out. It's pretty easy. And even a baggage claim, if you don't want them to help you, decline. If you don't want the thing, decline. It's okay. Um, don't look at them as a threat. Just look at them as they're just, that's their business. They want an opportunity to make money. And if you don't hire them, they move on to the next person. Um, so that is my journey. Enjoy the rest of the videos. I think the rest of the video is just me because um, I came early. It's just me enjoying Nigeria. So as soon as I got here, 
I went to Mega Chicken, which I've never been. It's this big building. I'm gonna shoot a vlog on it. So I went in, I saw like turkey, fried fish, jollof rice, amala, eba, egusi, and I was like, ah, I'm back home. And then immediately after, I saw some fresh fruits like pineapple, pawpaw, the oranges that they peeled and sliced. I grabbed some and then I went home and then later, I went to the beach, literally not like an hour later, I went to a beach nearby and people were dancing and having fun and music. It was just nice to be like back in Nigeria. Welcome to Nigeria, my people, to the coastal area of Lagos. So that is my journey of um, how I came from the airport through Lagos. I am going to be shooting a lot of videos coming up about Airbnbs, about journey of me looking for an apartment, about all of my real estate investments that I've helped people do that I'm doing, land, and the state that I'm trying to build. So much content that I need to take time to edit. I'll be sharing that with you guys. If you are looking for more Nigerian content, please make sure to subscribe. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. This would allow me to do story videos so I can share live details of what's going on. So I really, really appreciate your support so the best way to support my channel is to subscribe and i would really really appreciate it and lastly guys remember remember it's your time to rise and let your light shine peace